you may have and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Now on the 4th of August 1914 war was declared on Germany by Toulouse in Belgium where at the Battle of Palouche they were one of the first British that year when they were this day and the 16th world and brought empires of jobs and money of nations. One grouping was between Germany and Austria another between Britain, France and Russia. However, by 1914, there were several had internal problems too. The issue of the car that carried Franz Ferdinand to Sarajevo the morning of his assassination bared a very striking number plate. Now this vehicle is now on show at the Museum for Military History in Vienna. And it, and it was from a travelling preacher that one of Money Moore's veterans, Leslie Bell, who I'll quote a few times in the tour, would have found out about the war with Germany and it spurred him and many of his friends to join up. I'm now going to let the preacher say a few words now about the rising threat of home rule between 1910 and 1914. And it also gives us a little bit of detail about what if the only way to sort out Ireland was to give the country a government of its own to run Irish. Their jobs at the end of the day and head down to the recruitment office en masse. Now, the first thing you did when you got there was you had to fill out your paperwork involving telling the army your name, your age, where you came from and what regiment you want to join along with a few other details. Now the average age limit to join the army in 1914 was from 19 years of age to 35 years of age. However, come 1916, the Battle of the Somme, the most bloodiest campaign in British military history to this day, they needed more men to fuel the war effort, so they simply extended the age limit from 17 years of age to 45 years of age. Now possibly the youngest chap killed during the First World War was a young man from Ireland by the name of John Condon. Now he enlisted in the Royal Irish Regiment. We also have this other piece of footage filmed in Belfast and December on the 8th of May 1915. With the men of the 36th Ulster Division, the Chief Form of Artillery Attachments, so many men in this one division, it would keep the parade bright, bright yellow. And eventually, Jesse Roberts. In fact, 
fact, if it was windy, the breeze would cut through the billet unhindered. If it was to rain, the roof may have leaked and the billet could have flooded completely, which would also affect the supports holding up the roof or the bunk beds themselves. So, it was quite common for one or the other to collapse suddenly in the middle of the night. Also, towards the closing days of the Song campaign, there were all...